I guess I should give a title here. Let's just put a title. Let's put a giant title. Electric field due to a ring charge. What do you think about that? And you're, oh, wait, hey, wait, wait, but that's not a ring charge. Okay, so let's just get, we got a lot to do here, so let's get started. Quick review. The electric field due to a point charge. If I have a point charge down here and I have a location where I want to find the electric field, I can find the electric field with this equation right here. E is K, <clears throat> or 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. You've probably seen it that way. Q over the magnitude of R squared times R hat, where R hat is a unit vector from here to there. So what I would do is I'd find the location of the charge, find the location of the observation location, and then find this vector R, and then find R mag, R hat, and E. Okay. What if I have a ring of charge like this, and I want to find the electric field over here? Well, what I'm going to do is break this ring into pieces, in pieces, okay? And each piece is going to be a part, a, a, a point on that ring. And so I can find the charge of that piece. It's going to be the total charge divided by the number of pieces. I can find the location of that. I'm just going to say, I'm going to break this into theta sections. So it's going to be this piece, and then I'm going to shift up here, and then I'm going to shift up here. I'm going to keep going theta all the way around until I get to the back to where it was, and I'll have that many pieces. Then what I'm going to do, for each piece, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do it just like a point charge. Here's, where's the location of my piece? Where's my observation location? Find this vector r, and oh, see here's this, I'm going to say this is theta. So if I know theta, I'm just going to change theta around. I can find the the pieces of this. This is on the uh, z, y plane, so x is coming out. And then I can find this electric field here, dE. And then I can move to the next one and find the electric field and add it to that, and so forth and so forth, and go around. And then uh, that's it. So let's get to it. Okay, so I started a program here, and we need to do something. We need to do something because I got a k, I've got the charge of the ring and the radius. But the first thing is, how do we deal, what if I have 100 points? How do I deal with 100 points? Well, this is where we get a list. So let's just say this. Points equals 1, 2, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 8. Okay, so there's my list, and let's print that. I guess I should have made it bigger video. So it printed out. It's a list. It's kind of like a vector. It's a lot like a vector, but it's not a vector. Okay. Now, what if I do this? Print points 2. I'm skipping over a lot of stuff. Okay. So this is number 0, 1, 2. Is that number 3? So I can access each piece. Now, let's just do this. Watch this. 4 I in points. Print I. This is a way to cycle through every point, every item in that list. And so I can go through each item and do something to it. Okay. We're going to use that. That's really. Uh, oh, yeah, we do need one other thing um, for this list. I could say points equals points plus 9. This is going to add 9 to the end of that list. And now if I run it again, you'll see it goes down to 9. OK. Yes. That was super quick intro to list. But we're going to use it. And so that's why I wanted to, uh, to talk about that. OK, so now let's just delete that. So let's first make our ring. So I'm going to make a ring. I'm just going to call it C ring because it's got a charge and ring is a reserved word. There's a ring in Python. It's an object. I need to give it a position. This is going to be at the origin. I need a, uh, the axis is a vector <clears throat> pointing the, in the normal direction. So I want my ring pointing in the x direction. So I'm going to say axis equals vector 1, 0, 0. Uh, the radius, I can't spell radius sometimes is R. The thickness is how thick the, the ring part is. So let's just say the thickness 
is r divided by 10. And let's give it, let's make it yellow. And let's run it. Oops, it didn't run. See, there's my ring. You can, see, isn't that cool? That by itself is pretty cool, but of course we're gonna do more. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, now what I want to do is to break that ring into n pieces and put a sphere at different parts to represent charges. So let's say n equals 10. I'm going to start with that. And theta equals 0. Then that's my angle to pick those points. So d theta, how, much, how many pieces, how many angular steps do I need to take? Well, all the way around would be 2 pi. So I need to divide that by n. So that will make it so that I can break this into in pieces. Uh, I also need the charge for each sphere, each little piece. So dq is going to be q divided by n. Uh, now I need a list to put those points into. I don't want to have to deal with 10 different variables, right? So I don't, I'm gonna, not going to name them. So I'm going to say points is a list. And it's empty. I haven't made any points. There's nothing to put in there. So now I'm going to go and make a loop. I'm going to actually move around that ring right there. Let's move this right there, right there, right there, right there, and keep making those and adding them to my list. Let's do that. So I'm going to say while theta is less than 2 times pi colon, and I'm going to say points equals points plus. I'm going to put an object in there. It's going to be a sphere. Its position is going to be r times a vector 0, cosine theta, sine theta. Wait, I, do I have too many? Let's see, that's, OK, I think I'm OK. That one goes there. See, I got too many. Oh, this, that's why. There. I think that's right. OK, so that's that one. That's the vector, and that's the point. OK. And then I need the uh, the radius is going to be it's going to be uh, radius is going to be let's say r divided by eight and let's not give it a color. And then I'm going to I need to update theta because otherwise this loop will never end. Let's run this and see what happens. I should probably save it, shouldn't I? Okay, so there you see I have, uh, I have 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Woof! Okay, I thought I was going to have wrong numbers. But you see they're all evenly spaced, and there's my points. That's pretty cool. I can change this to 40. Uh, there's 40 points, see? Isn't that awesome? Yes, that's awesome. Okay, let's put it back at 10. Okay, so now I have a whole bunch of points. I could, and I, uh, I want to calculate the electric field due to each of those points and add them to the total electric field. So I'm going to say, I need my observation location. Uh, it's going to be a sphere at position uh, 0 0.100 0 on the x-axis. And it has a radius of, it doesn't really matter, r divided by 10. So let's just, let's just run that. I don't know why I like to run these things. OK, so that's, there it is. There's my, my point. You like that? OK. I guess I could put it closer. Let's put this at uh, 0 0.01. Yeah, I like that. Excellent. OK. Now I need my electric field. E equals vector. 0, 0, 0. Because I'm trying to calculate the electric field due to each piece and then add it to this. So I need something to add it to. So I have to start with the 0 vector and then I can add it on. So now I want to go through each sphere in that points list. So we're going to do the same thing. So watch this. 4 p in points. Okay, That's going to go through each point. Now for each point I need to calculate r. So r equals uh, the observation location. obs.pos is the vector location of that observation place. Minus p.pos. 
P is that sphere in the list. And P.POS is the vector location of that sphere. So that's R. DE is, uh, now this is the electric field due to a point charge. So it's going to be K times DQ times R hat, which is norm R, divided by the magnitude of R squared, mag R squared. Now I need to take that electric field and add it to my total. So I'm going to say E equals E plus DE. That's it. Okay. Now I'm going to, let's see, wait. I'm going to, uh, pr let's just print E and run it, see if it's working. Okay, so it, it gives me an electric field that's mostly in the x direction. There is a tiny electric field in the y and z direction, and that's because it's not perfect. It's just, a, you know, not, it's not exact. Okay, um, let's make an arrow for that electric field. So I need to think about scaling this thing. So I'm going to say E scale is 0 0.02 divided by the magnitude of E. What that does, that's going to mean that at this location, my electric field vector arrow is going to be 0 0.02 units long. I, I just picked that. So now I'm going to make an arrow, E arrow, which arrow, a type of object arrow. Its position is the observation location. Its axis is going to be E scale times E. And the color, I guess yellow. I always do yellow. I don't know why. Color equals color dot yellow. Let's run it. There you go. Look at that. Check that out. Wait, it gets better. This gets better. Let's, I'm going to save this because it's so much better. E field ring. Okay, what can we do now? Let's do this. Let's calculate E calc. Uh, if you've done the formal derivation of the electric field due to a ring, then we have an equation for that. Uh, it, and it's in the book and you've done it before, so I'm just gonna type it out. It's one over four pi epsilon naught, or K, times the total charge, Q, times the distance along the X axis, so that's gonna be obs.pos.x and then it has to be divided by r squared plus z squared. They have it on the z direction. r squared plus z squared to the three halves. So it's going to be r squared plus the distance squared obs.pos.x squared to the three halves. And this just gives the magnitude. But let's print. Let's do this up here. E equals, let's just print the magnitude. Uh, now let's print E. And let's put this Newton's, let's do it the right way. Newton's per coulomb. E calc. Now I'm going to print out E calc. E calc. Newton's per coulomb. And let's run this sucker. Okay, according to the formula, I get 3.18919 times 10 to the fifth. 3.1, look at look how close that is. And it's even, I'm only using 10 points. Up here, I can, what if I change this to 100 points? It didn't run. Look at that. Check. Oh, it's given a different answer. That's weird. Huh. Maybe I'm, I'm, I wonder why that is. Okay, well, well it's close enough that I'm not going to be too concerned. Um, I'm partially concerned, but let's put this back at uh, 20. Okay. That's pretty good. But wait, there's more. Of course, I could do the following. I could move this... Uh, observation location further away. Let's put it at 0.03. And yes, the electric field gets smaller and you could even see that it's doing the right thing. It is. But wait, there's more. What if I put this at 
0.03. So I want to calculate the electric field up here. So what's going to happen then? If I run this, check that out. Look, this is going to give me the wrong answer because this is assumed just based on the x-axis. But you see here, I can calculate the actual electric field. Is that not awesome? I can calculate the electric field anywhere. That is awesome. I'm kind of happy with this myself, to tell you the truth. I didn't think it turned out that well. So, I don't know. I just want to rotate it around and play with it. What would be fun is to make a movable arrow so you can drag this and see the electric field anyway. That, that's not too difficult, but it, the program looks a lot harder. Um, so, I will give you the link to this program in the comments, in the description down below. That's what everyone says in YouTube. Look down below. Um, but other than that, I'm just going to stop. That's it. Go do some physics.